Hello, hello, welcome back to Hot Deals. In this episode, we are talking about the latest hot news MRT line 3, which is the final MRT line, which is also called the circle line that links up LRT, KTM, MRT 1, MRT 2. So, in the entire line, which project or which station actually benefit the most? Which line is actually essential? As we always compare between MRT lines and LRT lines and KTM, which one actually deliver more value and more premium? Definitely, first one will be MRT. Then second one, it will be LRT. And in terms of uh, the three MRT line plus the three LRT line, like MRT line one, two, three, it has its own important station and essential area and interchanges. LRT also the same. LRT Putra links you to KLCC area, but LRT Star doesn't link you to KLCC area. So you can see in terms of the different, the key difference here, the key word here is actually the workings population or workers hotspot. Then of course, the third one, LRT line three, which is under construction right now the only essential or significant place which is Banda Utama and Banda Utama is not as significant as any other worker hotspot like Mid Valley like KLCC like TRX and LRT3 only connects you to Banda Utama from all the way from Klang to the last station Banda Utama so LRT3 is not something we actually look upon to because it's only one essential station so we don't actually leverage or bank on LRT3 instead we actually look at MRT line 1, line 2 and line 3. What are the things that we actually can invest or what are the projects or area or location that actually benefited from all these three lines. And currently the hottest news about MRT is MRT line 3 which is revived recently. Last time it has been shelved after the Pakatan Harapan government took over and now actually the current government revived the entire project, the entire 40 billion project MRT line 3. And MRT line 3 right uh, here that they are actually getting private funding from the private construction companies or maybe private funders and the project will actually spend across 10 years to build the entire line and of course in terms of this line there are a lot of different speculative station and also route there will be I think minimum two to three different routes, and a lot of different station has been proposed but which are the station that brings you the most premium value and will benefit the most in terms of project or location. So in this episode, we will also analyze in terms of the potential or the possibility of certain station and certain route will materialize. And then what are the key benefit point or key consideration point that we look at for this MRT line. Without further ado, let's go on to our slide. So what are the things that we actually need to look at in terms of MRT Line 3? Because MRT Line 3 is actually a circle line. Circle line, that means uh, what does it mean? It connects a lot of different lines and areas. For example, it connects MRT Line 1, and Line 2 and other LRT line. And then which point it connects to is very important. And then where does MRT Line uh, MRT Line 3 brings you to? Is it like co just purely connecting on LRT and KTM and MRT? In terms of like MRT Line 3, we actually emphasize on whether this line connects you to a worker's hotspot. A worker's hotspot means uh, there's a lot of working population in that area. For example, KLCC, Mid Valley, Hatamas to Tamas, or for example, area in like Banda Utama, area in like uh, Bangsa. These are all the areas which have a lot of working population. So does this MRT3 actually links you to current and the future worker hotspot? And of course, what we always emphasize is mega developments. We will also go to why do we need mega developments. Then the second point that we will look at in terms of MRT line 3 is the interchanges. The interchanges means uh, how and where it interchange. Most important is where does it interchange with other lines, which location, which station. Because interchange actually unlocks unlocks value and also commuting time. For example, as of today, uh, as of today, if I were to stay in Banda Utama, I want to go to KLCC. Banda Utama, that is a MRT line 1. But MRT line 1 doesn't go directly to KLCC. I have to change to LRT Putra line at Pasasani, correct? So that's why I want to emphasize that interchanges, the station, which area, which changes, it will help you to unlock the value of maybe LRT, say, LRT line or maybe MRT line. Then, of course, why do we have to emphasize on mega developments? Because me mega developments is a huge development, incur a big land size, a lot of budget. They can do sustainable living township concept, which, which 
which consists residential, commercial. You have people stay there, you have the commercial support system over there. And of course, with this kind of budget, right, you have things like infrastructure upgrades, amenities upgrade, better accessibility. You can attract a lot of bigger companies and residents come inside. When bigger companies come inside, which means when they hire people, right, you have more people with a higher income group to come into that area. There is why we emphasize on master development. And master development falls into, in summary, you have to choose something within the, uh, at least minimum 40 or 50 acres of land. For example, there's a similarity of Bangsa South is 60 acres, Pantai Central Park 58 acres, TRX 70 acres, KL Met 75 acres, and Banda Malaysia 486 acres. So that it is big enough for people like big players or one master developer to put in a lot a lot of focus and budget into making this area a success place or something it can pull it off then we look at all the integrated developments in Klang Valley which one has already completed which one is still in progress which one has not started yet so in all these like how many 15 to 20 integrated development which are the integrated development which is the most important thing Bangsa South has already quite matured actually there's no more massive developments of course currently they're still Duke 3 and Karinchi extending their ramp into Bangsa South which is a good thing that is why I emphasize and recommend all this mega development because all these years uh, 10 to 15 years they keep on developing the area to make it happen to make it happen that's why Bangsa South today still is upgrading their accessibility in terms of infrastructure the road access and stuff then in terms of the overview of MRT line this is one of the speculative route uh, which area we should look at so how do we want to start first one we look at MRT line line 3 right where does it bring us to so first thing you need to know is the mega development that it, that is kept connected the second thing which are the important interchanges similarly like KLCC Tun Raza Bangsa South is all about 1000 onwards per square feet kind of properties which area should we look at now then you can actually based on try to link up the whole picture and just now we mentioned about mega development which is worker hotspot and also interchanges MRT uh, that day they did a uh, press release right as you can see there's blue color there's a purple color that's green color so that means there is actually two to three potential route and then from here right after a, a lot of simulation a lot of different sources we can actually reduce our risk uh, of investing into the wrong area because if you invest into an area and then MRT3 didn't happen right then shit long so what I want to highlight here is the same thing mega developments and interchanges mm -hmm.